Mm, seems like a good time to start. <laughs> so, um, one of my colleagues in the Suzhou Linux Enterprise um, Lab in Beijing, uh, Jia Du Shang, unfortunately uh, couldn't make it here, so I'm uh, presenting this talk on his behalf uh, about extending Pacemaker to support geographically distributed clustering. So, at Linux Plumbers Conference in 2010, don't heckle you, um, uh, various HA people um, had lots of interesting discussions about things that needed to um, be done with Pacemaker, and one of them was support for geographically distributed clustering. Um, uh, Pacemaker running on Corusync really likes to run on something that looks like a local area network. So, is this annoying, is it? Um, so you can run your cluster in your data center, or you can, you can stretch it out a bit to what we call uh, metropolitan area clusters, where you've got some sites that are maybe a couple of tens of kilometers from each other, but you'll, you still want to have redundant links, and your latency still look, needs to look more or less like a local area network. So this isn't going to work for you know east to west coast of a continent. You, you might not have redundant links, links and you certainly don't have um, sensible latency. So the basic idea is that each of your remote sites runs its own pacemaker cluster and we're kind of doing a, a cluster of clusters concept on top of that. Um, so if one site goes completely down, the resources running at that site can then be failed over to the other site. This is only a mechanism for knowing that a site seems to be up and for managing resource failover between two or more sites. Um, it doesn't cover replication of configuration or replicated data that's somebody else's problem. So the idea here is that to Pacemaker, um, we've added a what's called a, a ticket, um, which you might think of as a cluster-wide attribute. Uh, ticket support in Pacemaker, uh, part of it might have been there in 115, but it's definitely there in version 116. And you can configure resources to depend on the existence of a ticket. So if a given cluster doesn't have the ticket, those resources that depend on it will not be allowed to start. In principle, this means that you could actually um, set up a couple of independent clusters and you could manually grant and revoke tickets on those sites if you wanted to do this purely manually. Um, that's fine, but it doesn't help if you want to automate failover and there's nothing there in the ticket, in the underlying ticket system, preventing you, the administrator, from um, accidentally assigning the same ticket to two sites and then everything's running all over the place and nobody really wants that. Um, so, uh, as I just suggested, we need a means of automating this and keeping track of tickets. So, enter the Booth project, which is a cluster ticket manager. It's um, called Booth as a play on, you know, you go to a ticket booth to get a ticket, right? Um, the primary concerns for having some means of monitoring multiple sites are listed here. The, the system Voting on who get, which site gets a ticket needs to be completely determinate. Every site needs to have the same view of who owns what ticket. You can't have one site deluding itself that it, has a, that it owns a ticket when another site actually has it. Uh, we need to avoid split brain. And this is basically a distributed consensus problem. Uh, so the Paxos algorithm was selected here. Um, if you're interested in this, 
It's a family of protocols for solving consensus in a network of unreliable processes. Uh, there's a very long Wikipedia page on it, which describes it using many more words than that, and it's got pretty little state diagrams. Um, it's interesting. No, really. <laughs> <laughs> so the basic design is that every site, everywhere you've got one of your, your, your clusters running, runs a, an instance of the, the booth daemon. Within each of those individual pacemaker clusters at a site, the booth daemon runs with a virtual IP address in a resource group, so you can only have one instance of booth running at any site. If an individual node at the site goes down that's running booth, booth just fails over to another node so the, the other sites can still see it. Uh, obviously you've got to have your firewall con and configured such that the IP address it's on is you know, accessible to the other sites, but that's okay. The other thing you can't do is if you only have two sites, you're screwed because you can't get quorum. It's just, it will not work. So we have the concept of an arbitrator, which is some system somewhere else. It doesn't have to be a pacemaker cluster. It just needs to be capable of running a single instance of the booth daemon. And that will act as an arbitrator to help in the, the uh, uh, voting for who gets what ticket. Um, apparently, you uh, support any number of um, cluster sites and any number of arbitrators. Um, I've already covered those points. And there's a, there's a booth client command that you can run on any site or on the arbitrator system to say, please grant a ticket to this site, and then those resources will come up, or please revoke a ticket. Here's a picture. Um, which you know, more or less shows more or less what I said on the last slide. Um, two sites, booth running at each one, a third arbitrator. Um, if you had three real clusters, you wouldn't need the arbitrator. This dotted storage line here, um, that's the thing that I mentioned was somebody else's problem earlier. Um, In terms of implementation, um, the uh, Paxos and Paxos lease algorithm underlies all of this. Um, I believe Jiaoju has some interest in actually splitting off that, uh, the Paxos part into a separate library so that other people with distributed consensus problems can then use that. Um, that hasn't happened yet, I don't know what sort of time frame there is there, but that's something that he's very interested in doing. Um, ticket management builds on top of the Paxos layer. Transport between sites um, is via UDP at the moment. Um, when these slides were written, um, support for more protocols was planned. If you go and grip through the source code, you'll see some functions that are suspiciously named TCP and SCTP, so there's something going on there, but um, for now, uh, UDP. Um, and there's some other bits and pieces in there. There's a configuration file parser. Um, there's a timer tickets. Once they're granted to a site, um, are periodically renewed. The timeout for a ticket defaults to um, 600 seconds or uh, 10 minutes. If a ticket is unable to be renewed uh, within that time period, um, it will get revoked from that site. Uh, that, uh, that expiry is configurable on a per ticket basis if you want to change it. So, that's that's about the overview. In terms of how you actually configure this stuff, um, I should have done Florian's show of hands before. Who's familiar with Pacemaker? Uh, that's enough that you can tell you, and you can tell you. <laughs> no. Um, each of your sites is an independent cluster. You're going to have to configure Pacemaker at each site, configure each of the resources at each site. And then what we've got here, this resource ticket, um, 
it may look suspiciously like a uh, location constraint because it's effectively what it does. The first resource ticket line here, um, don't worry about the ID, but it says that ticket A means that resor uh, resource one will only be allowed to run on this cluster if that site has been granted ticket A. There's an interesting attribute you can set here, which is the loss policy. If that ticket expires or is gone for whatever reason, in this instance, the nodes running that resource will be fenced. Um, the reason that you can do this is if you have some resources that take a very long time to shut down, you might want them to come up at another site um, a little bit quicker than that. So you have the option of just, if this site loses a ticket, kill the damn thing, something else can have it. Um, if you're running master-slave resources, um, as you uh, might be if you're using the Postgres thing that um, Morrison was talking about, or whatever. Um, there's the option to demote the resources when the ticket goes away rather than stopping them, and you can also uh, have it stop the resources or freeze them, which means it does nothing with them at all. Um, you also need to configure the booth resource. Uh, this is simply an IP address um, and an instance of the booth daemon in a group and that will run at each site. Booth itself has a configuration file. You need to have the same file on all of the nodes at all of the sites. Um, you, uh, C-Sync 2 is useful for this within a site. Um, may or may not be across sites depending on what you're doing. Uh, this says, says what it says on the screen. Um, protocols, ports. You need one entry for every arbitrator and one entry for every site to tell it the IP address. You need one line for each ticket that it's managing. If you wanted to specify a expi different expiry time for the ticket, there's some more syntax here. You can put a semicolon and um, the number of uh, seconds to expire the ticket after. If, if you had just the, uh, if you had no arbitrator but three se separate sites, uh, would that, uh, you just specify those if you... Oh. Uh, there's a thingy on there. I didn't want to get too close because of feedback. If you, if, you did, if you had three sites, three active sites, yep. and uh, you did not, uh, you would just specify three sites, that arbitrator line is only required if you have a site which is just uh, an arbitrator. That's correct. Yeah. If you only had three sites, there would just be, there would be three site lines, and that's all. Um... Okay. Something I didn't mention before, the administrator does actually have to actively grant a ticket to a site before anything will happen. Um, so from any site or arbitrator, uh, you can run the booth command line tool, booth client list will list you all of the tickets and where they're at. Um, to grant a ticket to a given site, booth client grant ticket name, site IP address, to revoke a um, similar sort of thing. You can also use the underlying CRM ticket or CRM site ticket commands, but don't, please, um, because you'll accidentally grant a ticket to a site that Booth's already managing. So just, you know, if you need to, you can, but you should let Booth do its thing. Um, and, hmm. I'm going to try and preempt one question. Um, if you've got more than two sites, three or four, um, what will happen when one site loses a ticket is um, the other sites will vote about who gets that ticket and where those resources come up. Um, so a potential question there is can you have a preference for what other sites or resources are going to come, at, come up at? As far as I can tell, uh, this hasn't been documented yet, but there is, um, if you look at the code, um, a notion of a weight applied to each site. So if you do actually want to, um, if something's running here, then you want it to try to go there before it goes there, there's, there's something in there that'll help with that. Um, and um, with that, 
Um, the project itself is hosted on GitHub uh, in the Cluster Labs repo. Um, please go look at the code. Please build it and play with it. You will need Pacemaker 116 um, in order to do so. Uh, the Astute Observer may have noticed drafts of SLES 11 SP2 um, HA documentation which mentions Booth. Um, I'm not sure I'm allowed to make product announcements, but given that that draft um, is actually publicly accessible, you can read into that what you like. Uh, pacemaker mailing list is probably the best place to ask questions. Um, we're clusterlabs.org if you're not familiar with that. Um, and I think that will about do. Do we have any questions? Uh, those commands about uh, the, the tickets looks interesting. What, what, what happens if I make a mistake and suddenly two nodes or two sites or three nodes and three sites at the same time think that they own the ticket? The same ticket. The same ticket. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, um, slightly more seriously. Um, at the pacemaker level, um, pacemaker's policy engine uh, knows about tickets and it knows that resources depend on them. Individual clusters have no idea what the other clusters are doing. So booth arbitrating them. So you can, uh, there's nothing within pacemaker stopping you from, from um, hurting yourself in that regard if you actually grant one there. If somehow you ended up in a situation where um, let me start again. Unless Booth is broken, <laughs> um, it, it's not going to grant the same ticket to multiple sites. That would be a very, very large, horrible bug. I'm not sure if that answers the question. What if it does anyway? If it does, oh, if it does anyway, if somehow it's broken and the tickets get granted to two sites at the same time, those resources are both going to come up on both sites. Um, and hopefully somebody will page you. <laughs> it's, I mean, the, the, the point of this, the, the design and the Paxos algorithm and distributing consensus over who can get what is to make sure that that exact problem does not happen. So, um, yeah. Anybody else? Thanks. Um, this is actually probably more of a question for Florian since he sort of just w uh, wandered, wandered away. Um, DRBD proxy, can you, um, has any, do you know of anybody that's actually tried running this stuff up with DRB, uh, DRBD proxy? I can take that one. Um, not in production, no, because this part is not really officially released yet. Uh, but yes, so I guess the underlying question is how do we solve the issue of actually getting the data across? Yeah, yeah. The, the other person had problem. Yeah, yeah the, some, someone else's problem. Um, so yes, DOBD in protocol A with DOBD proxy is an option. So that's, uh, that's one possibility. Another thing that I can think of right now is um, GlusterFS is getting geo-replication in 3.3. And that would be another one. In my personal humble opinion, um, it's not quite as mature as um, DOBD with DOBD proxy. Because what you can do with DOBD is you can easily fail back, which in Gloucester basically is a major operation. Um, so, but you can still use it for DR, but not necessarily for actually following the sun. Um, but those would be two options that come to mind. For database applications specifically, it would be um, database replication. MySQL replication, Postgres streaming <coughs> replication, Galera, Tungsten, what have you. Going back to my point yeah. uh, is actually quite interested in the geo replication problem. Um, uh, so, um, and I'm sure he's interested in hearing from people who are doing this or who are. Um, have problems that need solving. So if you're doing stuff in that area, um, come and grab me later and um, we'll have a chat.
Um, anybody? Uh, how much of a time? Um, uh, Rob's due to start in about two minutes. How are you doing, Rob? Yeah, but that's good. Okay, so there's no uh, further questions. I'll uh, hand over to Rob. Thank you. Thank you.